Dutchy Roofing. Uh, all right. Um, how does one become a roofer? Well, let, me tell you the first. let me tell you the story. Um, I was born in Miami. My dad, my uncle, my grandfather all worked for the school board and were roofers. Um, my mom and dad. My mom was a nurse. My mom and dad moved to Tallahassee in '82. Opened Apache Roofing. My dad, he was grandfathered in. He got his license down there in Miami. Um, so I was seven when I moved up here. Uh, through high school, I worked summers roofing with my dad. Decided I wanted no part of roofing. I hated it. I was like, this is hard work. It's hot. This is not the work for me. Once I got a little older, matured. Went to high school, went into college, I figured out I wasn't going to be a doctor, I wasn't going to be a lawyer. I said, I've got a business here, if I'll take the reins. I mean, I knew the roofing part. Um, so, went to college, I got a building construction degree, learned how to read blueprints, bid jobs off of that, do the, more of the commercial end. And that's when, basically, I got my roofer's license in 04, um, state certified which means you can register, means you can work in your area, state certified, I could go work in Dade County in Miami. Um, so that's when I got into roofing, basically was put into it. Um, and what I wanna show y'all today is we got various different roofs from, everybody is familiar with the three tab shingle. The three tab is the basic, which probably if you have an older roof, um, I would say 70% of Tallahassee has a three-tab shingle on it. This is a newer type. This is called an architectural shingle. They're trying to phase out three-tab shingles in Florida due to hurricane codes. Um, this roof here is a lifetime. It was a 30-year. This is what you have, Steve. No, but why, why are they trying to phase out three tabs? Because of the hurricanes. It's got more lift or what? Well, your winds on a, on a uh, three-tab shingle are 60 mile an hour. This is 130. Mm -hmm. So architectural shingle, we're talking 2,000 square foot house. The difference in cost going from lifetime, 130 mile an hour wind from 60 mile an hour winds, like 400 bucks mm -hmm. for the entire house. So it's kind of a no brainer. Right. Um, this was a lot you would hear 10 years ago if you got a roof estimate, they would say 25 year, 30 year, 40 year, 50 right. year. They discontinued. There's only one shingle manufacturer carrying a 30 year still to this day and everybody else has went to lifetime. Um, so, and you get, you essentially get the lifetime for the same cost as the 30 year. So I don't even bid 30 year anymore. Steve, put this on your roof. Lourdes, put this on your roof, white with, she had solar gauss fans for energy efficient. Um, Adam Watson, he actually went with white because you get a tax return because <laughs> only white is Energy Star, recognized by Energy Star, state of Florida. Um, so this is the most popular. Now, if you don't want shingles and you're interested in metal, this is the most popular metal that I sell. This is, you would see, um, this is a continuous pan. And what I mean by pan is a three foot wide continuous from the peak to the eave of the roof. Um, comes in all these colors. This is going to be a lot more efficient than shingles. Why? Uh, just like that asphalt parking lot, if you go out there in the sun, you put your hand on it, and it's 90 degrees outside, it'll burn you. Once the sun goes down, it takes three or four hours for the heat to dissipate out of that asphalt. Metal's cool to the touch. Think about your car or truck. If you're in the sun, you touch it, it's hot. You pull under a tree, it's cool immediately. The heat dissipates. Same way with the metal. So it's not radiating heat into your attic all day. Um, so, energy efficient wise, yes, it's more energy efficient wise. If you have a lot of trees or you're not worried, Florida is a big deal because of the sun. But if you're up north, it's not such a big deal because, you know, you've got equal with the winter and the summers. Um, this is more energy efficient, but it costs a lot more to install the first time. Uh, material, labor, everything's more with the metal. All right, that's continuous panels. What if you like shingles, the looks, you don't like this commercialized. A lot of people say the metal looks commercial. Um, what if you don't like the continuous panel and you like shingles, but you like the benefits of metal? We've got 
other products. These have been out for a while, but these are just the newest. Um, this is an actual metal. It's a shingle, and they're both they're shing they're metal, but they're like an individual shingle. So you lay them individually. So you put one on. It has clips that you put in here. You put screws down. Your second piece will interlock, so there's no exposed fasteners. And basically what that, that's going to do is give you a continuous roof of all metal, but you don't see straight pans. It looks like either stone, wood shake, you know, whatever style you're looking for. Can you walk on that stone? Yes, you can. What are your price difference? Now, this price difference, you're looking... <clears throat> All right, let's say an average house, 2,000 square feet. <coughs> let's say $7,000 for architectural shingles. Metal, you're looking at about probably 3,000 more, about 10. You're looking at metal <coughs> shingles, you're gonna be another probably 5,000. Not 5,000 above this, I'm saying 5,000 above the base rate. So now you're at 12,000. Right. What about durability? This, this product right here is 40 year. We're at lifetime with a shingle. This is 40 year, this is lifetime. Lifetime means 50 year, they just say lifetime, but it's 50 year. This is if you, terracotta tile, if you like this look, big in South Florida. Mm -hmm. Not big up here yet, but it's moving this way. I mean, Orlando, this is all you see. Yeah. But a lot of it is old Spanish S real tile. In Miami, I mean, my dad did this for years. That's all they had. They didn't have shingles back then. Um, it was all tile. So now they've got metal to basically emulate that look. Um, a lot more cost efficient for this than real Spanish S tile. Spanish S tile is basically put down with concrete. And you've got a guy, and like in the olden days, it depended on, you had tile and you would have to fit them in place because they really made them in Mexico over a lady's knee. And if she was a heavy lady, you had a big tile. If she was a skinny lady, you had a tile. So you had, to, you had to fit in where the tile would go. And then you put concrete, and basically, that's why they're so good during wind, because they're concreted together. You also have to have a different roof system for real tiles, too. Oh, so yeah. Your, your deck, your, your rafters, because the weight. Got to be up the weight is tremendous on real tile. Now. How do, how do tiles, this is lighter how than do, shingles. How do tiles stack up against shingles when it comes to efficiency and stuff like that? Um, Got to be more efficient. Yeah. They're going to be more efficient than shingles, but not as efficient as metal. Mm -hmm. Clay does absorb heat, but not as much as asphalt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this one, this is asphalt. I forgot to show you this when I was showing you shingles. Let's say, when we were talking about shingles before, let's say... You want shingles, you like the lifetime of it. Um, efficiency, pros and cons with shingles. I always tell people, they're like, well, what color do you think? Da, da, da. I'm like, you know, you pick, you've got to come home every night. But pros and cons, the darker you go, the hotter your roof, the hotter the house. The lighter you go, obviously, the cooler the house. But the flip side of that coin, if you have a lot of trees around your house, you're going to show mildew on a light shingle. When does that, all, all shingles in Florida now are fungus resistant, but that's only for eight to 10 years, then it starts. You're gonna have mildew. This is the answer to mildew. If you never wanna pressure wash your roof, this is called an Atlas Prestine. It is backed by Scotchgard in 3M. Why? It has a copper crystal that's in the shingles. If you remember, Steve probably does, 10, 15 years ago, you would see People would put zinc strips up at the peak of the roof. When water runs over zinc, it prevents mildew from growing. This is the same thought process, but it's embedded in the shingles. So this shingle, you would never have to mildew. I mean, there's, I mean, you would never have to pressure wash. They're showing you a mildew shingle right here. This shingle's guaranteed for life to never mildew. Um, is this shingle a ton more? No. This, this shingle over that GAF, architectural, um, average again, 2,000 square foot house, you're probably, if that one's $400 more, this is going to be about 800 So it's only double the cost of the regular, but nothing like the metal. 
Um, so, you know, th can, this, can you to me, this is the best, best bang for the buck. Can you, can you pressure wash roofs? Yes, but there's a misconception <laughs> with that. People think you hire Joe Handyman to get up there with a pressure washer and he's just, you will blow the grain rooms. The only difference between a 50 year and a 25 year is the amount of grain rooms embedded in the asphalt. That is your life difference of the roof. What you want to do with pressure washing, you use chemical, which is, you know, it could be outdoor Clorox, it can be chlorine, anything of that nature to kill the mildew. No more pressure than a garden hose. They actually call it soft wash now. Yeah, and soft washing is the key to no more pressure than a water hose. You don't want a pressure up there because it will, I've seen houses where I'll go, they'll call me and they're like, we've sprung up all these leaks and I'll go out there and you can see the streets. You can't see from the ground, but when you get up on the roof and I'm like, did you have your, did you just have your roof pressure washed? And they're like, yeah. And it'll actually blow holes in the shingles because you, the only time you're pressure washing the roof is because it's old. You know, you never do it on a new roof. So then the roof's 10, 15, 20 years old and you get up there, it's already paper thin and you get up there with a pressure hose and just blow holes in and there's leaks pop up everywhere. So you definitely gotta be careful with that. On the metal roofs, how, how loud is it when it rains? I mean, is there another, a Another, I get that question all the time. Metal is not loud. This is why. Everybody thinks of, all right, this, Think of an old barn tin, like a tobacco barn. It had open rafters. You've got two by fours running up and down the roof. You've got one by fours this way. Five V crimp, which is thinner than this, the kind that rust. This is galvalume, the old type, and you hear the pitter patter of the roof. All right, today, there's no open. We all have plywood. We have insulation in the attic. Then when I install this on an existing house, in other words, a re-roof, I go over the shingles, take up the perimeter, dry it in with an underlayment because we're gonna create a barrier between the metal and the shingles. We don't, this expands and contracts. You don't want the bottom of this pan rubbing on your shingles. But you gotta think about shingles, underlayment, plywood, insulation in your attic. Is it more loud than shingles? Yeah, but I mean, you're not gonna hear it inside. You're not gonna be laying in bed and hear like you're thinking. Everybody asks that about the rain. strips under that, over the shingles. In some cases, if the roof is real smooth, I don't. If the roof trailer, for instance, trailers always, trailer, I'm speaking of mobile homes, you can get on the ladder and look down it. And the main reason is because they use two by two rafters, it goes like this. Well, to take that imperfection out, if you run one by fours long ways, you can see the reflection in metal way more than shingles, this action. So if you run the purlin strips, the one by fours, that takes that imperfection out. But no, on a standard house, I don't. Because you've got to think of, when you screw this metal down, you have to have screws every two feet, all the way up the pan. So you would be going two feet the whole length of the house, one by four purlins. That's a lot of money, you know, to add on top of you're already going up with the metal. Roof. What's the wind resistance on that? 140. 140. 140. Same as on the, uh, the uh, 2,000 square foot house. How much is that? This would be about 10. Yeah. If you're seven on shingles, you're about three, four more. Now, this is the other thing. Why are you saying about? It's not an exact figure because it depends on how cut up your roof is. Where they get you on metal is all the transitions. It's another, it's another. Valleys, I mean, you, your dormers, the little good looking dormers on the front are a nightmare to roof with metal. Mm -hmm. You have to put flashing under the dormers, there's valleys, there's peaks, you know, and then you'll see these houses, we call it a witch's hat, where you have this peak that comes up with all these, basically it's an octagon sitting on your roof and it comes up to a point. Everything with you know, all that detail work, that's what adds up. Rake edge, ridge cap, valley metal. I mean, you're talking like $15 a piece where this is $1.90 a square foot. So if you're roofing a barn, it's not gonna be that much more. But if you're roofing a real cut up house, Golden Eagle, um, you know, houses that are real cut up, bunch of roof transitions, it's very expensive. Wayne, when you put metal roofing on, is it better to put insulation up under the the roof directly as opposed to in your attic? I get that question all the time. 
People are like, price it both ways for insulation and for uh, non-insulated. All right, here is, to me, I would never do it, and this is why. You, when you put insulation, all right, number one, the widest you can use is a one inch, so styrofoam insulation. All right, you could use four inch ISO if you wanted, but what it's gonna do is create imperfections in your metal because when you screw that metal down, it's gonna press that insulation and it's gonna leave divots, so it's gonna look like crap. So one inch insulation styrofoam, think of a styrofoam cooler, we know that insulates well, but to run that one insulation, two foot on center, if you use insulation, then you have to put purlins to screw your metal to, there again, so it doesn't smash your insulation down. So you've got two foot in between each rafter, the entire roof. All right, we're gonna spend 2,000 square foot house again. Um, let's say you spend 1,800, 2,200 in insulation. Then you're going to put one by fours on top of it, another 800. Now we're up to three grand above this roof. <coughs> All right. Already this metal is going to be 25 to 27% more efficient than the shingles you had up there. Utility bill, you're going to see a difference. That insulation, you're only getting R factor of R15. We know in your attic you need like a 30, 35, 32 city. You're not going to get that on the roof. An R15, $3,000, it would take 30 years to regain that $3,000 you spent up front. So no, I wouldn't do it. I don't think it is. If, if, you, if you still got the right ceiling insulation in, I don't think you're gonna see any difference at all in your, in your electric bill. The best? If you, because the best thing you have is your draft from your eaves up through your ridge. Man. That is, and that's another thing. And so, um, ventilation, ventilation. People all the time, their roofs, there was no codes back 20 years ago to ventilate the roof properly that there is now. Um, back then, I mean, you would see two little four foot vents and that's it on a 3,000 square foot house. There's hardly anything getting out of there or they got a le little electric exhaust fan. It's spinning eight years motor burn ups, no good. Um, the best ventilation on the market is a shingle over ridge vent, the whole peak. Reason it doesn't, it's not, we're not using power to make the house more efficient. We don't want to do that. It's counterproductive. Um, it's totally passive. There's no working parts like the old whirly birds, turbines. The ball bearings go out in them, they quit working. It's all about the ball and then your, your soffit underneath, your soffit vents is where you draw air. Now, if you were building a house, the best insulation going is isonine insulation. I put isonine in my house, in my walls, in the attic. There's no venting whatsoever in the roof system. And I have lifetime architectural shingles on there. You can stick your head, do an AC work. Where do you go, Robert? You can be in the house and it's 70 degrees, stick your head in the attic and it's 78, 80 degrees. 10 degrees difference in the middle of the summer. Wow. And utility bill, I mean, it's just, which I didn't know this, I had read and heard about it, but I've been in my house probably six years now. The best thing I ever did, which it, you know, it costs more up front, but but you don't have any vents in your none whatsoever. So you want an encapsulated system, yeah. mm -hmm. the icing yeah. about how cool the attics are with icing. Well, everybody get them. <laughs> the AC doesn't work. We need one of those guys in our BNI group. All right, so we're looking for that. Yeah, there's not many of those in town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's spraying. Th it looks like great stuff you buy in Lowe's, or yeah. And they they squirt it in and then it expands. Is that on your roof, Justin, or on the underneath? Underneath. You put it on the bottom of the roof. Correct. Uh -huh. You spray the rafters, the plywood, everything, but it's sprayed from in your attic, mm -hmm. from underneath. And it doesn't shorten the shingle life? No. Nope. Now, there's only a few shingle manufacturers that will let you use isonine. Some of them will not warranty their shingles for going over isonine. Does that mean it's going to burn the shingles up? I disagree. They're in cahoots because they sell the vents. Right. Mm -hmm. So they sell the ridge vents. They sell the soffit vent. They want you to buy all of their system. Mm -hmm. Which just, you know, it's $500 Oops. every house. Think about it. But, um, <coughs> far as shortening the life, no. All right. What's the life expectancy of a blue tarp? 
Uh, that'll be about two months. Living next to Steve, about a week. Wait, what is a what is a twenty year warranty or fifty year warranty? I, I mean, warranty is a, a, a nice big word. Prorated. Prorated. So if you're twenty years into your fifty year roof, you're paying two third or a third of it. So they come in and they say, "All right, it's tw been twenty years. You've got a fifty year roof." We're going to prorate these shingles, take 20 years off the cost. Then we're going to give you what they cost then, what it cost then to put it on, not what it costs now to put it. It's a joke. It's That's a joke. what I thought. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they prorate it back then, 20 years ago, not what it's going to cost you to replace the roof now. So people, I've seen people, you know, they get some money back, but full replacement, no. Now, on the other hand, I did do a roof that in eight years, it was just a bad batch of shingles. I mean, they started breaking all apart. Tamco came in, they replaced the entire roof. My labor, everything. Put them a new roof on me. But that was under the 10 year mark. When you get out 20 years, they'll get you. Good job. Good job.